Welcome back into another episode of Where the Game Lives On, the official podcast of the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, Season 2, Episode 5. Byron, we doing all right this morning? We are off the rookie contract. So <laughs> we, we are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Season 2 got renewed. Uh, we like to joke about that. We've got a special guest joining us today, the, one of the latest inductees of the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, Clay Harbor. Welcome to the podcast, sir. I appreciate you guys having me on. I don't think you're off the rookie contract yet. You usually have to go through uh, four years. Right. of misery before you get that <laughs> second deal and obviously you see a lot of the players in the nfl today a lot of the big problems are coming up on that rookie contract mm. and if they could get to that second contract earlier but congratulations on being off the year too so <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, hopefully yeah. we'll get not get franchise tagged or anything yeah, so. yeah. they yeah. say that they say that that second contract that's like the life-changing one right yeah because the first contract's okay it's good money like you're coming out of college at that point anything's going to be good but the if you're a guy that has a lot of success, that second contract is where you really, you know, make the, you look at Brock Purdy. Like, I think they said Brock mm-hmm. Purdy's making like 900 K this year. Yeah. And like, he's possibly an MVP candidate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you look at the other quarterbacks, you got Patrick Mahomes making a quarter of a billion. This guy's <laughs> making 900,000. <laughs> you know, you got Deshaun Watson, same thing you know, a, a quarter of a billion dollars. So that first contract, man, you got to play through that and make sure you get the second. That's when you get those really big deals. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, as I mentioned, you are one of the latest inductees of the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, uh, a fourth round draft pick of the Eagles in 2010. But what maybe some people of the general public don't realize, uh, us, us around Springfield obviously yeah. do, yeah. is but prior to that, uh, a former Missouri State Bear. Yeah. Now, was yeah. it SMS um, when you were going there? It was SMS my rook- rookie year. My <laughs> freshman year, we're talking about these contracts. Yeah. <laughs> my freshman year, it was SMS, and I was there for the big name change. So yeah. I remember showing up on campus. It was SMS. And then like a week into the school year, they decided to actually officially change the name. So I actually have a few SMS shirts somewhere. Oh. Hope I still got them. And then uh, my first year was actually the first year we were Missouri State Bears. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. first uh, first time in Springfield since? I got inducted to the Missouri State University mm-hmm. Hall of Fame okay. back in, um, in 2020. And then uh, I did a speech for the Missouri State Athletic Department. I did two. One was on the Onward and Upward campaign, mm-hmm. if you guys remember yes. that. One. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I do some some motivational speaking, and I uh, came out here and spoke to the athletic department in uh, probably like two years ago, I'd awesome. say. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, folks may not realize that you, uh, even as a tight end, were, are the all-time leading receiver in uh, Missouri State Bear history. How did you uh, wind up down here in Springfield? Because you're from yeah. uh, the Chicago area, is that correct? Yeah. So, you know, funny enough, my uh, my brother was uh, was a really good linebacker at my high school and we're from the sticks so like i don't know who who you guys would compare that to out here but i mean i I graduated with 60 kids i think we had 200 kids in our entire high school you know freshman through senior and uh it's called dwight illinois three thousand people in the town so he didn't get a lot of offers even though he was a really good player Corey harbor and he ended up uh kind of slipping through the cracks and last minute got a scholarship offer out here and he came and played and we were one year apart um Next year came along, I, you know, I got a couple of bites, nibbles, but nothing big. And, you know, he was kept talking to coaches and passed him my tape. And hey, we actually like your brother. Get him out <laughs> here for a visit. They got me out here for a visit. Next thing you know, they offered me a, like a three, four scholarship. And I ended up accepting. And, you know, that's pretty much how I got out of here. I thought I was going to play basketball. I was a much better basketball player in, really? in high school. And I had some looks, but I got hurt the second game of my senior year, and I missed the whole season. So wow. basketball was my better sport. I was skinnier back then, you know. Now I'm like kind of bulky, but I was a point guard, and I was, you know, 175 pounds. They could really jump, and I, I got recruited here as a wide receiver slash safety, defensive mm-hmm. back. So, you know, that was my first love was basketball. Really, really. Well, mm-hmm. I would say it worked out all right, though. Multiple All Missouri Valley Conference honors, All American, also a Missouri Valley Offensive Player of the Year. While yeah. you were at Missouri State, uh, people don't always realize this at the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame to be inducted. You don't have to be born in Missouri, yeah. right? A lot of people make their name through Missouri sports, and um, we certainly are glad that that you have that rite of passage. Um, I'm kind of curious though, what like when you think back about your time in Springfield at Missouri State, what what stands out to you the most? 
man, I had a ton of good times here. And the first thing was I'm just really appreciative. I was able to, you know, play four years of college football with my brother. You know, that's like, that's a memory, you know, I'll always cherish, you know, it's like me and him always grew up talking about, we wanted to play college sports together. And then now, you know, we get to talk about all our days in college. So I'm just really appreciative that we both had the opportunity to come here and to play football together, which was, you know, was a dream and is a dream at the time. You know, we we really appreciate it. And then, you know, I really, you know, I really loved the, the difference of my career because my first couple of years weren't weren't good or easy. You know, I come in here, I get red shirted. I'm a wide receiver. I'm not very good. You know, I'm I'm you know, receive you know, I'm, I just don't think I'm going to ever make the field, right? Then then I come in as a freshman and and I don't do much either. I probably had five or six catches and this is all in games that we were either getting blown out by 50 or we're blowing someone out by 50. Mm. So at that point, you know, it's not looking good. I'm not getting a couple years in. And finally, my third year, I get moved to tight end. And, you know, I start to have some more success. And the next thing you know, you know, I'm, I break the tight end record for receptions and yards and touchdowns. I'm all conference, all American. And it was like I go from this guy that was not even stepping on the field. He couldn't, you know, make the bus, you know, which is travel to away games. You know, it's and then, you know, junior year, I, I had a little bit of a down year. Senior year, I had a really good year but to me it was it just showed me that if you have the the persistence and you're resilient that you can bounce back and like failure is never it, failure is a part of success if you can take that failure over and over again early on you know i got picked on i got bullied the coaches didn't like me it was just a really difficult time i felt like leaving i felt like going home my brother kept me here, but things just, I just kept coming, kept showing up, kept putting in the work. The next thing you know, you know, I'm this first team all conference for three straight years, three time all American. And it just looking back at that is something I was very proud of because, you know, some guys walk in and you're just a freshman all American and it was great and you enjoyed it. But for me, it took time, man. And, you know, I was, I was really close, really close to, to leaving. It's crazy to think back you know, how different my life would have been if I would have decided to say, Hey, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't do it here. And I'm gonna go, you know, try my luck doing something else. So looking back, it's just funny how little decisions and perseverance and, you know, accepting failure and learning from it can really, you know, take you to a place that, you know, is, is far beyond where you're at. You You mentioned uh, doing some motivational speaking. I mean, that's a awesome message to yeah. to kids coming up that you know but there's so many kids today it seems like they they just want to quit and try yeah. something new and or the transfer there. portal the yeah. transfer transfer jump portal. around yeah. and yeah. stuff yeah. 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 yeah 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 no it's 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 real man it was like because uh, you hear about it some people think it's supposed to be easy and it's supposed to happen and and for me it, it definitely wasn't that i think some people it, it is but you know you you look at some of the the most successful people you know, in our society, like you listen to like Kobe Bryant, you know, like talking about how hard he worked, you know, there's a year in school, he went through a whole basketball season, didn't score one point, you know, the guy's work ethic was incredible. I mean, you can go through countless and countless guys. And for me, you know, it wasn't easy. And it literally almost left Missouri State. And if I would have left and I wouldn't have, wouldn't have fought through it and wouldn't have just kept trying to learn, I can do this, I can do it. You know, the self-talk, working hard, you know, using failure as a stepping stone over and over again that you can finally have a breakthrough. And then obviously, you know, it led me to this all-American player into, you know, the NFL and, you know, coming from a very underprivileged family, you know, I was able to help a lot of people, you know, in my life, my mom, my dad, my grandma, and and that was always my goal. So, you know, looking back, it's it's always interesting to see like how these small decisions and these mindsets can really change your your entire life and just the ripple effect of what would have happened if I would have maybe have taken a different path. For sure. For sure. So, so I played receiver way back now, obviously not in college, but uh, <laughs> I can't imagine switching from receiver to tight end. Oh. What, kind, what, what was that transition? I mean, because you're going from not just catching the ball, but blocking and everything else. So. At first, I mean, I, I was, I didn't like it. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to do this. You know, I'm a guy, I didn't want to do it. And that was another thing. It was like, I didn't want to move from wide receiver. They gave me the choice. And I said, okay, like, let, let's see what, what will happen. If I never moved to tight end, I never, I might 
eventually be in the rotation at wide receiver at Missouri State, you know, but I never, I definitely never get drafted, never play in the NFL and, and get to do all that cool stuff. So it was, it was difficult because, you know, obviously a wide receiver, you're just running routes, you know, you'll stock block, you know, you kind of mirror the guy, you'll get a push on him, whatever. But at tight end, you are physically blocking defensive ends. And these guys, you know, they're trained killers. You know, these guys are, are trying to hurt you, yeah. you know, and that took a while. And, you know, you're going to practice, you're in training camp. Back then we had two a days. I mean, the bumps, the bruises, you know, instead of running around catching balls. And I mean, there were some hard days like, man, I don't know if I want to do this, but I grew into that position. I learned to love that position. I, I truly do. And I became, you know, I took till my senior year, but I really did become a very physical player and coming in at, at tight end. You know, I was I was a talented receiver, but I couldn't block very well. But by the time I graduated, just on those, you know, that one percent every day mentality, get better. I, not only was I the best receiving tight end in FCS, I was also, in my opinion, and you know, just watching film and everything, I thought I was the best blocking tight end in, in the FCS, and something I really took pride in. And it was a process. It took a lot of work. You know, the technique, the weight rooms, literally gaining weight. I would be down at the Garst Dining Hall. I'm dipping my sandwiches in water because I'm eating. The guys are going upstairs to play Xbox. I'm going in for another meal because I'm just eating so much to try to gain weight. I gained 65, 70 pounds at college. Wow. Uh -huh. How many people can gain that kind of weight and still keep their athleticism? Yeah. Yeah. So just weight room, just eating and you're full, you eat some more. Like my I gained 20, I once gained 20 pounds in 20 days. And that's that's legit weight. 20 pounds in 20 days of solid weight coming into my junior season just because you know you put your mind to it and that was that was how i was i'm just gonna eat i'm gonna work out i'm gonna run and i'm gonna gain this weight and th those were the things that w were able to help me get to where i needed to go because there's talented receivers that oh i just can't gain weight no you can gain weight you don't want to sit down <laughs> at the you don't want to sit down at the dining hall when all the guys are going yeah. to play xbox and eat wait a little bit to digest and then eat some more when you're getting tired your jaws sore because you're eating so much because they you know the nfl scouts come by this guy's 220 he can't play in the nfl tight yeah. end okay we'll see you know check my combine weight 255 pounds you know i, I came in here at a buck 80 you know, nfl combine 255 pounds wow so a lot of a lot of meals a lot of time in the weight room and a lot of hard work but i i think this you know this question started out as the tight end position, but <laughs> truly love the tight end position. I think it's one of my, obviously I'm biased, but I think it's one of the best positions on the football field because you can, you can get, you're involved in everything. You're involved in the run game. You can, you can literally help the running back bust a big run. You get to block this defensive end. Then you also can do some fullback stuff. You can pull up and, and, and play fullback a little bit. You can split out and play wide receiver. You can go catch passes, catch a touchdown. For me, I'm like, well, I can do everything that there is to do on a football field at this one position. I don't have to stay out here and just catch passes. I don't have to be the big fat guy that just has to block for the, for the quarterback. I get to do everything. So for me, truly love the tight end position, and I've just become such a fan of watching people play it. Absolutely. I like hearing from your perspective. You talk about the perseverance and, and the growth that, you know, that you went through at Missouri State. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. Whenever you went to the Combine in 2010, you were only one of 20 FCS, FCS yeah. guys selected to go. So I wonder, like, as you came up through Missouri State, you changed positions, you start to establish yourself. Did you kind of always have like this this chip on your shoulder, I guess, that, that made you feel like you needed to prove to people? Yeah, no, I did. I did have that chip. And then, you know, especially going into the uh, to the combine stuff and like the all-star games, you know, like East-West Shrine game, you know, you, you don't know because like you hear about all these big schools and you know, I thought like I could compete with these guys, but you play one game against like Arkansas a year, like Oklahoma State. But like, I'm like, how am I going to do like going to this East West Shrine game? This guy across from me is from Texas or this dude from Florida. Like I'm from Missouri State. You know, you have the success and you think you can play against them. But I remember when that first snap happened and I, this guy's no different than me, like than the guys I've been playing against. And I'm like, dude, if, if you just work hard, and you're just, these guys are the same age as you. They've been through the same stuff. They're kids just like you are at the time. So then I started, I go, why am I not better than these guys? And that's the mentality I took. Go through the rest of the All-Star game. You could pull up articles on the Texas versus Nation game, the East-West Shrine game. How's one of the guys that, you know, turned the most heads in the combine? 
you know, I don't care. I'm there with, you know, Rob Gronkowski, Aaron Hernandez, Jermaine Gresham, like all these guys, the big name guys coming out of these colleges. You know, I was able to have a lot of success at the combine because I wasn't intimidated by performing against some of these guys with bigger names. So I, you know, I definitely did have that, you know, that chip on my shoulder. And then through training, like some of the guys didn't take it as serious as I did from the bigger schools. I trained at IMG Academy, Academies in Bradenton, Florida. And I remember the guys like we they, we would train like seven days a week, but then they would they would like go out to bars and stuff and like Clay, you coming? I'm like, no. Like what? Like why are we here? Are we here to like go have fun? Like oh, you need a little release, relax. And I remember I, I I didn't leave the campus once. We're staying in IMG. We're eating. You know, we're doing all the work. And I ended up being one of the only guys that had a really successful combine. And I think that our our coach at the time for running wasn't very good, but all those guys like I was training with. And I remember thinking, I'm like, I bet it's because, you know, they weren't as dedicated to the, yeah. you know, staying there and, and training and, and everything else that's going on outside and not strictly focused on the football aspect of it. For sure. One thing I'm curious about, I want to start getting into the time you spent in the NFL, uh, 2010, uh, you, you spent time with several different organizations. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, answer this, how you see fit. Yeah. What was your favorite time during your playing career in the NFL or, or what organization did you enjoy playing for the most, I guess? You know, that's a two pronged question for me. Um, the favorite city in the favorite time like I had, I would say would probably be with the Eagles. But for me, I was still kind of learning how to be a pro. And I came into a situation like, you know, I'm drafted. It's like kind of like had this feeling, oh, I'm here. And I kind of maybe took the took my foot off the gas like I did when I'm trying to get there and college is so focused and I didn't have as much success in Philadelphia as I wanted to. And I kind of get overwhelmed by, you know, I go from playing in, at Missouri state in front of 7,000 people. Now I'm playing at Lincoln financial field on Monday night football with Michael Vick, Deshaun Jackson, LaShawn McCoy, you know, in front of 80,000 people screaming yeah. Philadelphia Eagles fans. So I kind of let that get to me and I'm not playing up to my ability. I love the city. I loved my time there, but I became a better football player when I moved to Jacksonville. And in Jacksonville, when I think of the, the football aspect, I just, my routine, my habits, everything. I, I got released from Chip Kelly. I remember my fourth year in the Eagles. I remember thinking, like, I, I could have done more. And I, I, I'm never going to, to have this feeling to where I get released thinking I could have done more to keep this job. Like, this isn't something that's going to last forever. So when I got to Jacksonville, it was like my whole, like, it's funny in Philly, I, I wasn't known for being this guy that knew all the plays that were like the coaches in, in Jacksonville would ask me plays, Clay, what do they have on this one? I made sure I'm studying. I'm one of the last guys in, you know, in the, in the weight room, the last guy in the film room, I'm doing my studying there. I'm just making sure that I'm taking advantage of this opportunity in Jacksonville. Cause after being released, you realize that this isn't something that's going to last forever. So Probably had more fun. A young guy, you're drafted, you're 22, 23, get drafted, you're a Philip Eagle with a bunch of buddies. You know, you go to that, that was a great time. But on the field, Jacksonville is when I really became a pro, you know, and I was really dependable and was able to do a lot of different things. And I wish I could take my brain, my mind from when I was in Jacksonville and put it in my body in Philly, because obviously a much better team. In Jacksonville, we were the 32nd out of 32nd out of 32 teams offense is three years in a row so you know you have 300 yards receiving with two three touchdowns in jacksonville your yardage totals we have one third of the yards the denver broncos have you know so it's like you can have success here and you know people see that you are a dependable player but you don't get the statistics as far as when you're like doing big time like free agency deals so there's some ups and downs to to both places but you know those are the two places i spent the most time but i do regret when I left Jacksonville because, you know, I had an offer to come back for a couple more years, end up going to New England. So you're obviously doing some things now. You're doing a lot of kind of analysts, a little commentary work, uh, watching, you know, guys in the league right now. How do you feel about where the tight end position's at? Who's like, who, who do you like to see on the field? It's interesting for tight ends because part of me is that traditionalist. I like like the old school tight end that's going to block more, you know, like, like, dude, I had to block. Like, <laughs> my guy Brent Selleck, I, yeah. he's blocking. It played, you know, like, we're, we're guys, you have to do everything. Nowadays, I feel like there's two types of tight ends. He's like, either or. 
Yeah. Like, I love Travis Kelsey. I think Travis Kelsey's the best tight end in NFL history. But, I mean, if you watch him block, I mean, he's he's basically just standing in the way. I mean, he's in it's, he doesn't have to because he he could be one of the best slot receivers in the NFL. He's just so smart. He has such a feel for zone coverage. And he's just so crafty and man-to-man. And that's what he does. I think he's great. Like I said, best receiving tight end in NFL history. I like Rob, Rob, Rob Gronkowski. He didn't have the long career. You know, I played with Gronk. I thought mm-hmm. he was great. You know, unfortunately, he had a lot of injuries. You know, Gronk liked to get after it on the field, but he also liked to to, to get after it at the dance club, too. So I think that might have limited some of his years. But Gronk was a guy that was that old school tight end personified. Because, like, he could, he, Gronk could have been a Pro Bowl offensive tackle. Yeah. That's how good of a blocker. People don't realize how good of a blocker Rob Gronkowski was. At tight end, I mean, his hands are always perfectly placed. His has got that flat back chest, face and right in the middle of the chest of the of the defender. It was just incredible. Just no matter what, it was incredible watching. And I remember receiving wise going there. And you know, one of the reasons I signed with New England, like I said, I left Jacksonville. Wish I would have stayed because I knew it was going to be a tough. And my agent goes, Are "You sure you want to go to New England?" Because they just signed Martellus Bennett. They have Rob Gronkowski. They just drafted AJ Derby. They have Michael Williams, James Devlin. They have a big roster there, and like this is a tough roster to make. And I go, I'm gonna play with. I go, I don't care. I was, you know, I I wanted to play with Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Rod Gronkowski. So I I go to New England, and I'm like, I want to see why Rob's good, and just watching him like running routes. I'm like, is he is he faster than Martellus or me or anybody? No. I'm like, does he run some crazy routes? Is he like quicker? No. And uh, I'm like, is this guy intelligent? Like you ask Gronk, like, yo, I see him like do some some move on a ride. I go, Gronk, what made you do that? Like, yeah, you know, I just I just saw I was open and <laughs> you know, I just went that way. Ran into some space. I'm thinking this is like some intellectual the guy could just play. Gronk was a big dumb animal, love Gronk, but he was a guy that just had a field, just knew how to play football and just made plays. Crazy. I can't say why he was that good making those plays, obviously. You know, Tom Brady, that helped, but Gronk was good in his own right, but he was just a guy that made plays. He was a gamer, huh? He was a gamer, and you just throw this guy the ball, like I said, like, why, why'd you do that, Gronk? You know, I just thought I could I could get open if I go that way. <laughs> you know, I'm like trying, like, intellectually, I'm like, wow, that was such an interesting move. Like, why would he do that? Just no answer for me at all. But Gronk was a guy that did everything, and in today's game, I like Dallas Goddard. He's a solid tight end. He's not. He, he's known as a good blocker, but watching more of his film in Philly, I'm like, he doesn't really even do much blocking either. Yeah, he's in space a lot. He can, but he, he he's not a big blocker. I like Kittle. Kittle will hit you and will will make some plays. I think he's a solid tight end. Um, Cole Komet for the Bears is a good blocker. He'll catch a ball occasionally. You know, obviously the Bears stink, but uh, you know, I think Komet's a solid all around tight end. I don't know if he's worth the forty million he got, but. He's a guy that can do everything. Um, it's a, it's kind of a down year for tight ends this year in the NFL. I know everybody watching fantasy football, but like Kyle Pitts, you know, he's basically a receiver, but he's not getting many op- opportunities. Like David and Joku, I, I feel like isn't having a great year this year. Like Dalton Kincaid's, you know, he's okay. A guy I really liked, and I liked him coming out. I went to the I went to the Senior Bowl. Was Luke Musgraves? I think he'll be good. He's for the Packers, Pack, but yeah. my number one tight end coming out. Now, I'll pull up the receipt with Sam Laporta, and he's showing that from Iowa. This kid can't play. He's just so smooth when he catches the ball, yards after catch. Love Sam Laporta. And he has and, to uh, block if he's playing for Iowa, too. Yeah, and he's yeah, a guy yeah. that'll throw it in there a little bit. Yeah. So, for me, like, most people don't care. The fans don't care, like, if a guy's, like, a solid blocker because, like, you know, it's not as important than if you can get 100 yards a game. But for me, as a tight end, mm-hmm. I want a guy that does both things. And, you know, I think those are the guys, you know, that I talked about that, that will do both. So post-NFL career, you're still kind of involved with the, the game, doing some analyst work. What has what is, what is post-NFL been for you? Yeah, so it's been funny. So, I, you know, after the NFL, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. You know, obviously I end up going on like a couple of reality shows, which was technically during and a little bit after. So I dove a little bit into reality TV, not really a big fan. You know, in, in hindsight, what I do that over again no you know <laughs> did they call me and you know check my temperature if i'd ever want to come back on the beach of bachelor in paradise i'm retired <laughs> um, but you know it was an interesting part you know i'll have a lot of stories to tell if i ever have kids and grandkids um you know I'll sit down at the kitchen table and be able to tell them a lot of stories 
they pull up a video. This was your grandpa on the beach and you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, you know, looking back, I you know, I do kind of wish I would have went another route with that, but it was a cool experience. And then um, you know, I got certified as a personal trainer, strength conditioning coach, started doing some work there with classes, considered buying my own gym, but you know, really I love working out, but I don't like training people that much. I'm like, for me, I'm like fitness is, you know, I work out probably five, six days a week still hitting the weights hard, but like training people for whatever reasons, I just like working out myself. So I decided, okay, that's not it. So then I start um, figuring out maybe, maybe I become a coach or, or get into media. And I just came up with this idea to get into the media space. You know, I'm like asking around if anybody needs like, dude, you need to get some like tape and some experience before oh, yeah. we, before you get a job, <laughs> like at NBC or I'm like, okay, but before I to get experience, I have to have experience. Yeah. So it's like this catch 22. So I just came up with this idea that, uh, and you know, I'm, you, to be, to be a guy that just walks a new job, you gotta be like, you can't just say you played in the NFL like that helps, but like you have to, I'm not a big name guy and I'm a backup tight end, career backup tight end, but the guys that are hall of famers, they walk into those jobs. And some of them, some of them I'm watching, I'm like, these guys are terrible, but they have a big <laughs> name and they're, you know, they were really good players. So they, it worked for them. So I start, I came with this plan. I go, I'm just going to go to training camps and I'm going to start tweeting, you know, Twitter or X now, whatever Elon Musk is calling it. And, uh, I went, I called up some people from Philly that still, you know, that still are on the organization, like how he's still the GM. And, you know, I get on field and I'm, you know, right there with the media guy. Like, hey, Clay, like, what are you doing here? I'm like, you know, I'm actually just, you know, trying to cover, trying to get into the media. So end up networking there with a bunch of people in Philly and just tweeting out to fans. Like, this is what I'm seeing as a player. I go to Jacksonville. They like, get me on field. I'm literally on the sidelines talking to the player, talking to Doug Peterson. I show up at a press conference. And this is Doug Peterson for you. I'm randomly there. I started doing work with this company, Jack's Milk. Started tweeting Jags, ESPN 690, Jacksonville. Doug Peterson goes, Clay Haba. That's what he always used to call me in Philly because he was a quarterback coach. And I'm like, he's the head coach. No, I hadn't seen this guy in years. Clay Haba, how we doing? I'm like, good, Doug. Middle of his press conference. I'm like, man, good to see you. You're looking, looking like you can still play. I'm like, hey, man, give me a workout. Everybody starts laughing. But that's the kind of guy Doug is. So I go to Jack's Milk in Chicago is where I'm from. I don't know any coaches there. I don't know anybody in the organization, but I do know some players. So I get the players to invite and to get to training camps closed. You have to get tickets. So I get the players, just give me tickets to training camp and I start tweeting. And then from that, you know, NBC Chicago, like I start going on their show. I start working with ESPN 690 Jacksonville, going on their show weekly, a couple times a week, start working with a podcast company inside the Eagles with Philly this year and last year. And, uh, you know, it really just, started with coming up with a plan to go and just kind of take action and start tweeting you know and it, it's really cool to see how it's kind of um you know expanded all from from just that idea to just come up with you know a plan and, and to me that kind of just goes to show that if you really want to do something like just sit down like come up with a plan and try to stick to it and eventually if you keep going like something will come from it and i'm also you know, I, I do speaking engagements and yeah. I, I also went back to uh, school. Um, it's been about two and a half years now. I got about probably six months left to uh, get my MBA, my master's from uh, Kelly School of Business at IU. Congrats. So uh, it's an NFL program. If you get accepted and you you uh, you have to apply for the scholarship, they, they pay for it. So it's a really cool deal that, you know, former a lot of former players don't take advantage of everything you can for the retirement. If you hit that vested veteran part for four years, after the NFL, it's like it's a really cool deal for you Sweet. because you get a lot of like educational benefits and stuff yeah. like that. I uh, I spent some time in TV for a little bit before I came here at the Hall of Fame. So some of the things you yeah. were saying, I was <laughs> like, oh, you're, you're like how difficult the it is to yeah. like to like get in there, and it's like, dude, like yeah, you got to have the experience, and it's like, okay, how do I get the experience? Yeah. And then big name guy will come in and just walk a new job, <laughs> and you're like. Like now, bro, like what is he even talking about yeah. right now? Like he was a great football player, but I'm like maybe. It's possible that a great football player isn't great, like on air. I don't know. I mean, I mean I <laughs> but can, I can write down some names. I'm sure. Yeah, and I'm just like listening to some of these guys. Are you? Um, are you? Sorry, are you doing some commentating for the Missouri Valley as well? Yes, I'm uh, for okay. the Missouri Valley Conference, but I'm I'm typical. I'm just staying at Illinois State. Game. Okay. So okay. it's funny because I, you know, I work uh, with the 670 the Score in Chicago, which is like the biggest sports radio station in Chicago, and uh, 
the athletic director at Illinois State just heard my uh, heard one of my shows and was like, hey, you know, you're a Missouri Valley guy. Would you be interested? And I'm like, to, to get into a color job, you know, I've wanted to do it. And, you know, my agent is like, we need some tape. And I'm like, oh, it's yeah. the perfect time to get some tape. Let me go and show I can do this, you know, even though it is the Redbirds, you know, I'm a Missouri State guy. <laughs> and, you know, you know, I'd never liked the Redbirds because it goes back to they were going to offer my brother a scholarship. They never did. Oh, really? And then we used to like, you know, beating the Redbirds whenever we could because they're literally right down the street from my hometown in Dwight, Illinois. But, uh, yeah, just getting that film and obviously to get good at something, it takes reps. You know, in my first couple of games, I'm like, dude, this stuff is hard. Like, I'm, I'm just bad. But then, you know, you, you kind of start getting better and like, okay, I'm getting the, you get the, get the hang of it, get the hang of it. Like, okay, I can do this. So it's just, you know, just keep showing up every day, man, and just showing up and showing up. And eventually, like now I'm like, wow, like I'm actually pretty good at this. And um, I'm sensing a theme. I mean, yeah. the, the tight end going from receiver to tight end. Yeah. Now you're, I mean, I'm hearing the same stuff. over. It's over just like the growth persistent. mindset yeah, is cl yeah. cliche as it sounds instead of like the fixed mindset, the growth mindset that you can literally improve if you keep doing things is you know to me like looking at my life i mean it's just a story of that of just perseverance and sticking to stuff and and obviously i'm just in the middle right now of my commentating career i got a fingers crossed got a big uh, interview in philly next week i could maybe tell you guys about if uh if i get the job but it would be really big yeah. to uh if i if i got this uh this gig absolutely it would be the, the step that i've been looking to take and um so hopefully that happens but it is just it's just like I said, man, it's just that staying after it, staying after it. And even after like a year or so, like in commenting, I'm like, why haven't I gotten like a, like a, this gig? But then you keep going. Next thing you know, you're up for a couple of big jobs. So to me, it's just pounding the pavement and just putting in the work. And it's just like, you know, in, in the in the weights, you know, and like changing your body or whatever. You know, it's just like it just takes consistency in doing it. I love it. Well, you're yeah. motivating me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Unfortunately, though, we have we've come to the end of our time. Uh, best of luck yeah, with everything it. going yeah, forward. Uh, truly, truly honored for you to join us, uh, and oh, glad that pleasure, uh, got, glad that we get to be there to see you uh, inducted. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, a I'm honored. Honor. I'm honored to 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 be able to get inducted. And the, the funny funniest part about it is, last story is you know at the the uh, the hotel, the University Plaza. Yeah. You know, that was my first job. I worked there doing banquets. Oh, wow. You know, I was this freshman in college, you know, needed a job to to make ends meet and just to, you know, obviously I wasn't on a full scholarship to eat whatever. And I'm just there flipping tables, no working banquets for five bucks a day. And now I'm getting inducted to the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. It's kind of a full, full circle, circle moment. That's so cool. And awesome. it's just like, wow, that was my first like college job. Flip, I'm over here serving food, bussing tables, fl flipping up these banquets, and now I'm being inducted to the Hall of Fame. Awesome. Absolutely. That's, Full yeah. circle moment. Full That's circle. Incredible. Full circle yeah. moment. Well, we appreciate you joining yeah, us for yeah, sure, appreciate Clay Harbor, everybody. Uh, be sure to follow us uh, on social media channels. Check out what we've got going on across the Hall of Fame. We've got new episodes for you every Wednesday on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Byron? I'm Like I said, I'm ready to run through a wall. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so. Absolutely. We'll see you next time on another episode of Where the Game Lives On. Thank you.